have uh, two suggestions right off the top. Don't serve dessert the minute you ask the guest speaker to stand up. <laughs> and move this meeting to December, please. It's 103 in Calistoga when we arrive today. I appreciate the invitation to be with you, and I'm delighted that uh, my personal schedule called for me to do the dining program from Calistoga tomorrow, which made it much easier to get the night off to come join you. I must say also, listening to the names as Jim has gone through the business of the meeting, I mean, what, what a coincidence must it be to have your last name be Wine Connection and live in the Napa Valley. I mean, if you didn't, you'd have to move here for, for no other reason. Uh, I also, when I called Jim, I, I just wanted to get a little background information on the Napa Farm Bureau. And I must say, I had the most remarkable conversation. I've known the Farm Bureau over the years, and I've spoken at other Farm Bureau meetings in various places where I've lived and worked, places like Florida and the state of New York. And uh, I've never heard the word lefty used in the same sentence as Farm Bureau before. <laughs> And Jim said you should know that California Farm Bureau is considered the lefties of the National Farm Bureau, and we in Napa are considered the lefties of the California Farm Bureau. So, nice experience to join you lefties for this exercise in subversion here. Bob Steinauer and his daughter said that yesterday they spent 10 hours in a meeting with Sacramento bureaucrats on the subject of the European grapevine moth. I would fancy several days in the company of the light brown apple moth as an alternative to spending any time with a bureaucrat in Sacramento <laughs> on any subject. Incidentally, since your treasury is only down 7% for the last fiscal year, uh, Arnold wouldn't mind a little advice on how he could work a similar miracle. Uh, He's got a much bigger problem than you have. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, who was one of our founding fathers, as you know, was a passionate advocate of farming and agriculture, endlessly fascinated by the wine business, in fact. The New York Times travel section just ran an article on a trip that Jefferson took in 1787 to Burgundy, uh, just exploring <coughs> the remarkable terroir of this French wine producing region and being absolutely captivated by the idea of growing wine grapes and making wine and was committed incidentally to planting vineyards at Monticello, his home uh, near Charlottesville, which he did but without much discernible success. He had an Italian friend who traveled with him on occasion who also planted vineyards at an estate near Jefferson's and he failed as well. That region now is a major wine producing region in the Commonwealth of Virginia and Thomas Jefferson has proven once again that he was prescient. One thing he was wrong about, Jefferson said he thought America would become an agrarian democracy. We haven't become an agrarian democracy. Quite the opposite as a matter of fact. And the opposite is the most remarkable piece of business of all that such a small number of dedicated people, such as yourselves, in places like Napa County here in California and other places around the world, are able to extract from the earth enough food to feed the growing population of the United States, a population that is now over 300 million people, but to grow enough food to export to the rest of the world. When you look at the small number of persons who work in American agriculture and the enormous production which they have been able to develop and sustain, you have an understanding as to why Jefferson, passionately interested in agriculture, thought that this country would become an agrarian democracy. The fact that he was wrong about that, the fact that we became a democracy and fewer people are involved in the agrarian pursuits than anyone could ever have imagined two or three hundred years ago when the country was founded is a near miracle. People who farm for a living and who year in and year out, in spite of the vicissitudes of weather, crop conditions, pestilence, 
and economic conditions manage to extract first enough money to survive, not always easy, and second, crops that can sustain us and a significant part of the rest of the world are a remarkable group of people. They are also a group of people we should pay more attention to because they learned earlier than any of the rest of us had occasion to some of the fundamental lessons about life itself. You as farmers learned long before the rest of us that we are only sojourners here. We really own nothing. We are stewards of what we have. We do try to pass on our inheritance to our children and our successors in upcoming generations. But we understand, as you have taught us over the years, that your contribution to your progeny is a contribution of encouraging them to understand that we are here for a relatively short period of time, that we have a profound obligation to enrich the land we inherited and to leave it more productive and more protected than it was when we inherited it. In order to do that, you must fight endless political battles and meet extraordinary challenges, both scientific and political. But the great news is that when you do, and when you prevail, as you have here in Napa County, you do have the great joy of hearing someone like myself, a host of a dining program, say without fear of contradiction that Northern California is the capital of American gastronomy. My, my friends in New York don't like it when I say that. <laughs> And they quibble about, you know, I think we actually have a few more Turkish restaurants than you folks do out there in San Francisco or St. Helena. And it may be they do have more Turkish restaurants than we have here. But I always am able to stop that conversation dead in its tracks when I say, and yes, and let's not forget those yummy wines of the Hudson Valley. <laughs> You can list those gold medals in a single paragraph. <laughs> and Long Island tries, but it's not much closer. We are so fortunate to live in a part of the world that has placed such an incredible mark on what you do for a living that enhances our reputation. I remember a trip I made to see a friend of mine who was a psychiatrist in the American military stationed in Würzburg in the Franken region of Germany in the mid-1980s. And he said, I want to take you to this hotel restaurant out in the country, a place with tiny place, just a bulge in the highway with the impossible name of Bibelreit. And he introduced me to this woman who was the owner of this hotel, Frau Leicht. And we asked her if she would mind just choosing some things for our dinner and some wines to go with them from the region, since she knew the wine and the food much better than we did. She agreed to do that. I, I remember tasting a 1976 Baron Auslese as an appetizer wine uh, and meeting uh, a new grape called the Scheuereba. I'd never heard of it, never tasted it, and I was astonished by it. And she said, if you really like this wine, I'll introduce you to the man who made it. He owns several acres here in the floor of the valley. I did go to see him because I wanted to buy some more of the wine I had tasted, and I wanted to see the winemaker who had brought it about. Part of his farm was on a 70% grade. I couldn't believe it. 